Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Avid Blogs tutorial series, Get Started Fast with Media Composer for Adobe Editors. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and in this lesson, we're going to wrap up our Get Started with Media Composer for Adobe Editors tutorial series by talking about the last important concept that you'll need to understand when working in Media Composer, and that is exporting. There are three essential ways that we're going to export media from Media Composer, a recompressed export, a same as source export, and an MXF OP1A export, or an AMA file export, as it's more commonly referred to as. In this lesson, I'm going to show you why these three export methods are going to be key to your workflow, and I'm going to tell you how this all wraps up with what we talked about in our original lesson, where we talked about how important it is to set up your project correctly so that Media Composer can help you get your exports out of Media Composer the way that you need them to be. All right, let's keep our introduction short. Let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And as you can see, I have a timeline here that I basically just took from our previous lesson and I've duplicated it all the way down the timeline so that I have a timeline that's one minute long. I just wanted to have a sequence that we had at one minute, a good even length, so that you can get a rough idea of export times. Now, also keep in mind that export times will vary based on system, the size of the media you're trying to export, whether it's 2K, 4K. So obviously keep all of that in mind. I'm just working in a standard 1920 by 1080, 23, 976 frame per second project. Now I also want to flash all the way back to our first lesson when I was talking about project creation and how project creation is essential when it comes to exporting your project. Because for the most part, the way that it works when you're exporting your project is that Media Composer is going to reference in your format tab the preset sequence settings that you have selected right here. You'll see right now it's set up to be 1080p 23976. So this is how I'm going to be exporting my timeline. Now, obviously we can get in and make variations to this, but for right now, this is how we're going to export. So for example, if you just said, hey, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to export a standard definition version of this show. You could easily switch your preset to a standard definition preset. You could throw a reformat effect on this to letterbox it and export it as standard definition. It's very cool and very flexible to have that ability right inside a Media Composer. Now I know coming from Premiere, you're probably very accustomed to working with Adobe's Media Encoder in conjunction with Premiere. In Media Composer, we don't have to do that if we don't want to. We have the flexibility to export many different formats, many different resolutions right here from within Media Composer. Now I wanna talk about the first method, which is a recompressed export, basically meaning you wanna take the type of media that you've imported, let's just say for example, you've imported Apple ProRes and you wanna export, let's just use H.264 as an example, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that up right now. So I'm gonna select the entire duration of my sequence. I'm gonna assume also for argument's sake that I have audio here as well. And what we're going to do is we can do this one of a couple ways. We can right click in the composer window and we can come down to export. We can obviously right click on the timeline itself and come down to output, export to file, or we can do it from the file menu. Now, normally I do it from the bin. We'll come down to export to file. And that's gonna bring up the export window. Now, in a lot of cases, this is where things can fall off the rails for people because they say, oh, okay, I'm gonna give this a name and I'm simply gonna say save. The problem is that we haven't set anything up yet. And this is where we can come in and start creating export presets for us to go back to over and over again. So let's say, for example, you want to have a preset that you can set up so you can constantly send files to Pro Tools. Let's say you want to have a preset set up so that you can export WAV files or AIFF files. You can have that set up. You can have exports set up to do recompressed exports like H.264, Avid DNX, ProRes, etc., etc. So this is how we get in and do this. Now, how we start things out, you'll notice down here that we have the export setting, and right now it's set to untitled because I've gone in and purposely deleted all my presets just so I have a blank slate to start with, much like in most cases, probably how your slate is right now. So what I wanna do first is call up the options. Now you'll see that we have a few different options, a few base settings that we can choose to start the export process. Now you'll see that we have AAFs, AFEs, QuickTime Reference, which we can export from Media Composer, but the one that I wanna focus on right now is QuickTime Movie, all right? Now you'll see that we can choose a QuickTime Movie. Now I'm gonna skip over Same as Source for right now. We're actually gonna talk about that next. And what we wanna do is a custom export. 
Now the first, and you know, you can see right in front of us, the obvious selections that we can choose is do we want video and audio, video only, audio only, what do we want the format to be, which is where we can get in. And again, like I said before, there's a few exceptions. We can make modifications to our export preset here if we wanted to. In most cases, I wouldn't suggest doing it here. Uh, but you could make those changes here if you want to. Uh, what do you want the color levels to be set at? What do you want the display aspect ratio to be set at? Now, for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to keep our color levels as legal range. I'm going to leave the width and height 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to leave the dimensions as the native dimensions because I want to export this as a 1920 by 1080 23976 frame per second project. One thing that's also exceptionally important, and I always see editors get tripped up over this, is right up here at the top. Use marks means use in and out points. Use selected tracks, fairly self-explanatory, and you can also include inactive audio tracks if you wanted to. Now, we have the ability to export with mask margins as well. Mask margins are a way that inside of your composer window, you can mask off the frame. So let's say, for example, you wanted to see it cropped at a specific aspect ratio. Well, you can export enabling those masks if you want to. I actually normally leave this turned on because guess what? If you don't have mask margins turned on, it's actually irrelevant, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to my format options. Now, once I call up the format options, this is a fairly simple and straightforward window that you're probably accustomed to seeing in many applications, including Adobe's Media Encoder and even in Premiere from a few versions ago. Now, I said that we're gonna be exporting an H.264 file. Now, again, this window is fairly self-explanatory. I'm just gonna leave the data rate set to be automatic. We could restrict it if we want to. And I think I'm just going to do a basic, fast, single pass export. I'll say OK. The sound settings are set to 44, which I normally have mine set to 48 stereo. We'll leave all that the same. And we can leave that as prepare for internet streaming if we like. Now, once I've got all that set up, what I'm going to do is navigate down to save as. And we're going to call this H264. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say save. And now I'm going to be asked, what do I want to call this? We'll just call this H264 export. OK, you'll see now that what's happened is, is that down here at the bottom, we now have the export setting set up to export as our H.264. And I'm simply going to say save. Now, you'll see that Media Composer is going to start chugging along. This is a minute long timeline, and it looks like it's going to do it in uh, just about real time. So that's actually, you know, that's not too bad, you know, considering we are doing an H.264 conversion or recompression on this footage as we export. All right, now what I'm going to do is for the purposes of time, I'm just going to speed up this export so that it can be done and we can move on. And as you can see, we came in at just about a minute, just a little bit over a minute for that export. And what I want to do is just open this file inside of QuickTime 7 here, just to show you that if I come to the movie inspector, that this clip is a 1920 by 1080 H.264 2398 frame per second clip. And you can see now that the size of the clip, if I right click and I say get info here, is the clip has now come in, let's just close QuickTime here, at about 400 megabytes. Now remember, that's because I didn't limit the data rate. I could get and limit the data rate and we could make this file size as small as we need to. Okay, now something else that I want to point out, and I sort of mentioned this in the previous lesson when we were talking about saving title templates, is that when you start saving title templates, they're going to appear over in your settings window. Well, this is one thing that I really love about Media Composer, and you'll remember that we just created that H.264 preset. We'll take a guess what's happened now when I come back to my settings, and if I come down to the export settings, we now have that H.264 export setting either set to go or if another editor says, hey, Kev, you know what? Didn't you have that H.264 export preset? Can I, can I borrow it from you or can I take it from you? No problem. You can actually take that export preset and give it to another editor by simply opening their settings and dragging and dropping it in there. Okay, so let's talk about another type of export that you're going to want to do. And this is the one that's probably most common, and that's a same as source export. So what is a same as source export? Well, same as source export is pretty much just that. So let's say hypothetically that I have done everything in ProRes. I have brought in all my footage in ProRes. I've brought in, you know, all my titles have been rendered in Pro ProRes. All my graphics have been brought in in ProRes. And I just like to export as ProRes. I don't want to do a recompression. What I want to do is an export and a rewrap of the file to QuickTime. So how do we go about doing that? Well, you'll remember if I right click and I come down to export and we come down to our export options, we did have the very first option is same as source. And you'll notice that once I select it, I now no longer have the option to go in and to choose the export setting, 
for recompression. You'll also see that we lost a few other options in here, but we have the most important ones. We have the video and audio, video only or audio only. We have our color levels and our display aspect ratio. I'm gonna leave all of these on their presets and we're gonna call this appropriately enough, same as source. Okay. Now, one thing that this is also exceptionally beneficial for, the same as source export, is your audio exports. Because the same as source export will allow you to do a direct audio output to your QuickTime file. So, for example, if you have a timeline that has 5.1 audio with stereo, so eight audio channels, this is how you're going to get in and do a direct export to have all eight of those audio channels in your export. Okay, but it does also bring up another problem. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to export this same as source. Now, did I already call it same as source? Let's see. Yeah, we already called it same as source, so that's good. I'm going to say save. We're going to send this to the desktop. We're going to call this an SAS ProRes, okay, because I know that this footage is ProRes. Okay, I'm going to say save. Media Composer is going to do its export, and the one thing you'll notice is the same as source export is much, much faster than the recompression because, again, we're just doing a rewrap of these files into QuickTime. Now, What's also very cool, and like I said, because I'm working with ProRes, is that this is much like if I was working in Final Cut or even in Premiere, this will be a ProRes file that I could conceivably deliver to a station if I want. Now, I should point out that because I am working on a Mac, I do have ProRes as an option for a same source export. Unfortunately, for all my Windows friends, you won't have that option. But this does work, obviously, with any Avid DNX media or any other supported media that is supported for fast import into Media Composer. Now you'll see, here's my same as source export. Again, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna open it with QuickTime 7 here. I'm just gonna to come to my window for my movie inspector, my movie properties, and you'll see that this is now an Apple ProRes 422, 1920 by 1080, 2398 frame per second clip, okay? All right, now same as source exports are great, but the problem is, is that if you're exporting it same as source and that's not the type of file that you have to deliver, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have to export, you're going to have to convert it to another type of file, then you're going to have to send it. But one feature that we have inside a Media Composer that's really great is the ability to export MXF OP1A files, which have become a very, very common delivery format. Many post houses, many stations now accept this as an acceptable format for spot delivery or even for show delivery. And you have the ability to export that right from within your Media Composer timeline. What we're going to do again is just select all of our timeline here. This is again one minute long. We're going to right click and instead of coming down to export, we're just going to go one step further and come down to AMA file export. Now, inside of AMA File Export, what we're going to want to do is skip past the AS11, and we don't want to export as DPX, we want to export as MXF OP1A. Now again, I'm just going to use marks, I'm going to use the selected tracks, and we can include an active audio tracks if we want. I'm going to call this again, we're going to call this MXF OP1A Export. And you'll see now that we can come down and choose the video compression type that we want. Now, what's important to keep in mind here is that we have a few options here, including the Avid Codex. We also, if we're going to be exporting a 444 file from Media Composer, can export that. And if we want to export a JPEG 2000 file, you have the ability to export that as well. One thing that I also love is the fact that, again, much like with the same as source export, you can do a direct audio export right from here if you want to maintain all of your audio channels. Again, especially important if you're working with 5.1. What I'm going to do is just select stereo as the option. You'll see that right now the default is to send this file to the desktop. I'm going to say save and Media Composer is going to start exporting. You'll see that it's very quick on the export again, much like it was with the same as source files. Now again, I'm going to speed this up for timing purposes just so that we can get it exported as quickly as possible. Again, it took about 30 seconds to export this clip. I'm just going to hide Media Composer and you'll now see the MXF file on the desktop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it with Telestream Switch. We'll just say cancel there. And you'll see that here's the file now exported as an Avid DNX HD 175 file as an MXF OP1A file. You'll see that we have two audio channels which again are silent, so it's not really relevant, but this file is now ready to be taken and delivered to a station, or taken and converted into a different file type, or taken and brought into After Effects to be doing you know, effects work on. 
there's a lot of flexibility you have when working with this type of file. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that I get a lot of editors saying to me, oh, Kev, you know what happened? I took that file that I exported with that Avid DNX codec and I sent it to the station and they said they wanted a Sony XDCAM MXF OP1A. So now what do I do? Because I didn't have that option when I was exporting. Well, let's head back into Media Composer and instead of right clicking and selecting AMA file export, we're going to head right back to the export option and if you come down to your options, take a look at one of the options you have in your export as dropdown as an XDCAM MXF OP1A file. So I hope this lesson has shown you the unbelievable amount of flexibility you have when exporting from Media Composer. And the great thing is, is that if you set up your project correctly as to how you'd like to take the file and deliver it to your client, when all of your editing is done, no matter what type of footage you're working with, no matter what frame size or frame rate, in the end, you can't go wrong because Media Composer is going to hold your hand and help you export this file so that it's correct every time. And don't forget that you can get post-production workflow tutorials and industry insight that you need to bring great stories to life by checking us out at avid.com slash mediacomposer.